Good morning, everybody. My name is Jeffrey Draylook, and I am the community manager for Athletes for Care. We are hopping on here today to talk about athlete career transition. We have teamed up with the Athlete Transition Study and the doctors over there to help get a better understanding of the retirement and life experiences of retired collegiate, professional, and National Olympic athletes. So we're gonna be doing a little series here on IG Live, talking with some of our athlete ambassadors here at A4C. Um, so we'll let people come in. We're gonna be talking to Taj Deshan today. Taj is a career transition coach. He is an author, a podcast host, kind of a jack of all trades. So we're gonna get Taj in here and get going and uh, let some of y'all get in here. Coming through here. Taj, good morning. Jeffrey, good morning, brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I've been looking forward to this all week. Dude, me me too. I, um, I've i been super pumped to talk to you. You obviously are involved in so much. And, um, you know, here at Athletes for Care, we've been talking a lot about athlete career transition and just how important that is after the life in sports is over. And I couldn't think of anybody better to speak with um, to start this little IG live series out than you, my man. I appreciate that, man. As you know, yeah. I'm a big fan of Athletes for Care. And, and since you came on board, let's just say they hired the right man for the job, man. You've been awesome ever since you came on board. So I, I'm, I I'm honored that. to be here. Thank you. So um, let's start off. Why don't you introduce yourself to everybody for those that may not know you. And then, um, you know, we'll get going talking about kind of what you do and, and some tips and tricks to, uh, to help athletes, you know, advance in their careers. Yeah, man. My name is Taj Deshaun, a uh, former football player at Stony Brook University. I played corner and safety. Shout out to all my DBs out there. And um, I'm sure we'll get into it a little bit, but I had a very, very rough transition. A lot of drinking, a um, lot of isolation, a lot of just kind of, you know, internal battles that I dealt with, which I know is very common amongst former athletes. And um, after some time, man, after kind of getting back on my feet, mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally, all of that, I started Thrive After Sports. And I was 2017 going into 2018. So uh, I'm an athlete career transition coach. My goal is to take an athlete from being completely lost and just not knowing who they are outside of the jersey to having a 100% clear picture of what they want to do, how they're going to do it, and connecting with the right people along the way to help them get there. Started doing that in 2018 or 2017, going into 2018. In 2019, I started the Thrive After Sports podcast, which brought a lot more attention to some of the coaching that I was doing. Um, published my first book last year during the pandemic, um, Thrive After Sports, got it right here, the first book. And then uh, we just published this one right here, Athlete to Entrepreneur. This is a uh, collaboration collection of different former athletes. You see Derek Furlow on there, who's, uh, I know he's coming on live next yeah. week, so he's a part of this book. Yes, sir. But, um, yeah, man. So like you said, I wear many hats. I'm a coach, I'm an author, I'm a podcaster. I'm a speaker, and I'm also a vice president of self Publish in 30 Days, which is the company that helped me publish my books. So now I have the, the privilege of getting to help other people publish their books. Love it, man. But before we get into kind of, you know, your life as a career transition coach and how you got there, you know, out of the teammates that you had when you were in college and other athletes, you know, that you interacted with, you know, I've had a lot of talks with people and, and not just ex-football players. I mean, we're talking every sport, right? Like, how many people would you say like had no clue what they were going to do? Cause obviously like not everybody's going pro. Um, and that's unfortunately a harsh reality for some people. Yeah, man. I'd say with the guys that I graduated with, maybe one or two of them knew what they were doing. Uh, you know, one of them happened to be the quarterback. He was in med school while he was playing QB. So he kind of already had a path. Like, no big deal. But yeah, no big deal. But as you know, man, it's, it's pretty common where the majority, um, I mean, most college students, even non-athletes, most people coming out of college have no idea what they're doing, let alone if you've been just playing your sport the whole time. So pretty much nobody knows, man. And I was definitely in that group of having no clue. <laughs> For sure. And what's crazy, too, is, like, it's not even just the people that, in my experience, that, like, are just playing. And even guys that make it to the next level don't even, like, know what's going on. I, I interned for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers back in uh, 2011. And, like, one of the wide receivers, I won't, I won't name any names, but, like, you know, the first paycheck came in and he didn't know how direct deposit worked. Mm. And like, for me, like, I'm, you know, I'm a college kid. I'm, I'm explaining it to him. And I'm like, man, like, 
you're a pro athlete, your check is more than my tuition. And like, <laughs> you don't even know you have this money in your bank account. It's just, it's mind blowing. Right. Yeah, it's tough, man. And there's a host of challenges, as you know, there's, there's um, not only not knowing how to navigate kind of just what life looks like as an adult, I call it like going into the real world, because we're all living in that bubble of our sport. There's the finance, there's how do you deal with relationships? How do you even figure out what you want to do? How do you deal with missing the camaraderie of your teammates? How do you deal with the lack of structure that is now a part of your life where you just wake up and you got the whole day ahead of you? Nobody's blowing the whistle for you, making you work out. Nobody's telling you where you need to be. That freedom can be refreshing at first, but it quickly becomes overwhelming if you if you don't have a game plan. So, yeah, yeah that that routine. That's that's one thing that when I've talked to former athletes, that you know everybody's missing is the routine and that locker room feel of just like having people there for you and motivate you and, and push you. So, um, let's get into to your life as a career transition coach a little bit. How did you you know decide that you want to even do that path and, and help your other athletes out? Yeah, man. Well, so as I mentioned earlier, when I came back home from college, I was really struggling. You know, I, I went from being living in New York, you know, Stony Brook's on Long Island. So living the New York lifestyle, me being a California kid, um, experiencing that freedom of being a college athlete and coming back home to my childhood bedroom was very humbling for me. And so I spent about a year just drinking, um, just trying to kind of mask what I was going through. I lived in isolation. I didn't talk to anybody, including my family. And so eventually I'm like, okay, I could either stay here and keep feeling sorry for myself, or I could get off my ass and try to put myself in a better position and get off my feet. So I chose the latter. So started looking for jobs, started out in sales. As you know, sales jobs are always hiring, especially when it comes to athletes. Tough, <laughs> tough life though. Oh, it was awful, man. Uh, and mainly that's not the fault of the company. That was me lacking clarity and lacking vision, right? So here I am, uh, got into my first sales gig. I was making good money, but I wasn't, there was no deeper meaning behind it. I was just waking up every day, you know, chasing a check, which is pretty common because so many athletes, they just, you know, we just want to attach our identities to something just to say we're making money. And so to make a long story short, I knew I had to leave sales because I wanted to get back to working with people. And I felt like that was something I've always had a knack for, uh, even, you know, helping out teammates and stuff like that. So I got into recruiting had a successful career with recruiting because I can still be competitive. I can still put up numbers and make money. But at the same time, I was helping people put, put, uh, put food on the table for their families. So I enjoyed that aspect of it. And then something really weird happened, man. Um, over a six month period, I had about like five different teammates who I played with at Stony Brook come to visit me in San Diego in California where I was living. And so these guys are like, Taj, how are you doing this, man? You're making good money. You seem like you found your way. I mean, they didn't know I was still kind of unfulfilled, at, you know, even though I was making great money. They were like, how are you doing this? Like, I'm back home working at Home Depot. I could barely afford my flight out here, right? And so I basically became like a, a mentor and a coach to these guys. And I would do calls with them before work, after work, on the weekends. And it wasn't long before I started enjoying doing those calls, more so than going to my job. And then I had, you know, and then it started to expand because they would be like, hey, Taj, can you talk to my cousin? Like, she just finished playing basketball at TCU and she can use some help. So I'm like, oh, okay, wait a minute. This is bigger than just football players. This is all athletes. And then I really started doing some research. Uh, and this was 2017. You know, the conversation has, has opened up tremendously around athlete transition and mental health as a whole since then. So there are a lot of resources now. In 2017, man, there was virtually, I mean, I didn't see anything. You got guys like Derek Furlow, um, who I reached out to, Jonathan Orr, Thomas Williams. These are some, some people that I reached out to to let them know what I was about and what I wanted to do. But I didn't really see any other resources. You know, you might go on the NCAA website and it'll, there was a blog article. I remember like it was yesterday. It said, this is how you prepare for a job interview. You know, and that's great, but that doesn't address the underlying issues that come with the transition. So once again, long story short, I realized there was a need. I put together some curriculum and basically really started getting serious with it, man. Like if I could step up to be the person that I needed in my corner during that time, then I think I can have a huge impact. And so I stuck with it and you fast forward, you know, it's been three, four years now and been able to help a lot of people. And I um, feel like I'm just getting started, man. Still a lot of work to be done, as you know. Yeah, it's, you know, it's crazy. And now even more so, you know, I think the whole other conversation with the career transition now is even going into college with all the NIL deals going on. Of like, how do you manage that money and, and, you know, make sure people aren't taking advantage of you and then still that post life after college. And it's really interesting because like, you know, when you're in school, it's all about, you know, producing for the team, 
then when you get into the leagues, you know, especially the NFL, you know, there's that great saying of, you know, it's all about the shield and what, what are you going to do for the shield? Right. Um, but, you know, I'd love to hear from you in your talks with other athletes, like what's being taught in college, you know, what, what's going on? You know, I, I know that a lot of teams have people in the, on the football side of things, at least from, from my time working in the NFL, where it's like, you know, they teach you how to set up your 401k and things of that nature. But, you know, not every team has that, not every league has that. And so kind of what's kind of what you're seeing from talking to athletes coming out of college and, and even out of the pros that's like, why aren't they being set up properly? You know, man, I will say there's been a significant improvement um, at the college level over the past, honestly, the past two, three years, to be honest with you. Great. I graduated in 2013, so it's hard to believe it's been almost 10 years. When I was in college, there was no sort of preparation about life after the game. It was, hey, let's just get you in these classes, the cluster classes. They put all the athletes in there. We'll skate you by. We make sure you graduate. And, um, you know, being, I, I was just happy to be there, being the first person in my family to go to college. So I didn't really put up a fight. Uh, but at the same time, I think over the years, it's gotten a lot better. You know, we start to see a lot of the rise of positions like, um, what do they call them? There's like director of career services or, mm -hmm. you know, these are positions that I don't know if they existed when I was in school, but I definitely didn't know about them. Yeah. And these are some of the hardest working people in athletic departments because oftentimes they're underpaid, they're former athletes themselves. And these are the people who actually care. So it's, to me, it's refreshing because I think things are going in the right direction not only inside of athletic departments with people being put in position to actually help the athletes prepare for life after the game, but also you have a bunch of people like myself who are popping up and saying, hey, we went through it too. We struggled. We want to be able to support. And, we, and I think things are going in the right direction, and I think it's still very early, but the conversations opened up, not just about transition, but about mental health. And I think we'll see a rise over the next few years in not just resources within athletic departments, but people – stepping up and saying, I want to help too. So I don't even know if I answered your question, Jeffrey. I went like three different directions, man. <laughs> no, you're, you're all good. No, I mean, you know, when you're talking about the career transition too, like, you know, there's a resounding thing that keeps coming up in that, that the mental health, like, and that's one thing that athletes for care, we really focus on too, is like, you know, you're so much bigger than just like Taj, the football player, or, mm -hmm. you know, our executive director, Anna Valen, she was a swimmer in college. So she wasn't just like Anna, the swimmer. She's also like Anna, the person. And, you know, you're all people at the end of the day. You all have your, your own issues. You're dealing with stuff at home just like a normal student. Um, you know, you just have a little bit more eyes on you because of the, the athletic side of things. And, man, it's crazy. I was talking to one of our athlete ambassadors who's newer within the past year. And, like, he was telling me a month before we spoke that he was contemplating suicide. And it's like just because you can't find, like, what that next ro road is after college doesn't mean you got to, like, you know, let those demons get a hold of you. And so like, you know, you're talking about those career transitions that you're doing. You're talking about like guidance counselors and stuff in college, man, those people are so important because without them, I mean, you know, the coaches have to worry about, you know, 70 plus players or whatever it might be, you know, at least with some of the smaller teams, you can have a little bit more focus, but man, it's, it's the wild west out there sometimes with, with getting folks to, you know, have that life after sports. And, you know, we see it every day and what we do for sure. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah. It's, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you're, you're good. Keep, keep going. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think that um, it's one of those things where the athletic departments, like you said, the coaches, it's not their job. They have a job to, they're, they're supposed to win football games. And most of the people in the athletic department, they're just supposed to keep you eligible. That's their job. And so I think that as the, as the conversation continues and we're, we're talking about things like this and more resources start to pop up for former athletes, I think that we have to put some ownership back on the student athletes too, because I needed somebody in my ear telling me, hey, look, man, you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's not looking good for you going to the NFL. And even if you go to the NFL, the NFL stands for not for long. So yeah. you might want to just start crafting the vision. And that's something I'm really big on telling people, man, is that and it's unfortunate, you know, like you said, we lost a lot of people to suicide or people are contemplating suicide and it all comes down to that loss of identity. And so something I'm really big on telling people is that once you're done playing your sport, of course, you want to get a head start on it ahead of time, trying to figure out what you want to do. But that's easier said than done, because as we know, you're immersed in your sport 24-7. Yeah. So what I always tell people is once you're done playing, you have this vacuum that's opened up and you don't want to fill that vacuum with drugs and alcohol, you don't want to fill that vacuum with self-loathing. You want to fill that vacuum with self-improvement. You want to fill that vacuum with finding clarity around what you want to do. 
I always say nobody's going to knock on your door and be like, hey, you're supposed to be doing this. You have to cultivate that. You have to, you have to create your life. I always tell people you got to customize your lifestyle. You know, clarity has to be cultivated. Clarity doesn't just show up on your doorstep. You have to do that, that type of work. And that's, that's new to a lot of athletes because most athletes have never sat there and contemplated, like, what do I actually want to do now that I have all this time ahead of me, you know? Yeah, because, like, if you think about it, like, most people, and, you know, it's so funny, like, seeing some of those stories. It's like when you're in second grade, they're like, what do you want to do with your life? It's like, I want to be an NBA player. And the teacher's like, you're not, you're not going to be an NBA player. Like, what's, <laughs> what's the other thing? And, you know, you hear those success stories, and it's great of, like, I think Patrick Mahomes was one of them. It's like he wrote, you know, a note, and then they showed it, like, during the Super Bowl a couple of years ago or something. And, like, that's a one out of a thousands of people case right where you know it's like you also have other people and you're like oh yeah you can do it and like it's great to have that motivation but like as you're aware you know one false move acl's gone mm -hmm. you know whatever it might be david pollock actually is a great a great story you know he was linebacker for georgia now on college game day and he made it to the league and broke his neck and was told he could never play football again mm -hmm. and so it's like how do you then prepare for that and, and you know that's also where the mental health stuff comes in it's like you're supposed to have this long career, great career. And then, you know, it's all gone in, the, in an instance. And, you know, some people are luckier than others, obviously. Um, but man, it's, it's wild to see that people just don't know what to do and don't even know where to start. And that's why it's so awesome that, that people like you and, and Derek and some of these other folks are doing what you're doing. Cause man, to be able to like go to some of these schools and, and talk to these athletes and things of that nature, like they need a champion like you in their corner. Otherwise, like it's a long road ahead. Thank you, brother. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and that's honestly, like I said, I, I really wanted to be when I first started doing this work, I really wanted to be that person that I needed in my corner, you know, and, and being that I think that's what makes me relatable to a former athlete, because I know this guy's been through it, he understands it. And he's obviously made it out the other side. And so my goal whenever I'm working with someone too, is not just to give them, I don't want anybody dependent on me, right? I want to get you what you need. So you can have tools that you can work that you can use for the rest of your life because the transition is something that's ongoing. You know, we, we're all gonna face transitions at some point in our lives, even if it's not related to athletics. So I wanna equip people with those tools where, you know, you might be 30, 40 years old and have another life transition, but you're equipped to deal with that at that time so you can pivot and move powerfully into that next chapter of your life. So, yeah, man. Yeah, I think pivot's been a big buzzword over the past, you know, couple of years with COVID, right? Like people losing jobs, having to change industries, like all those things. and. You know, I think it's important and it's funny because like, you know, I think a pivot, like it's such a sports term at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's interesting that you say that. So obviously you can tell athletes a lot of different stuff, right? But if you had to say like a top three of kind of like what you're telling folks in their transition and trying to help kind of what's kind of the main three things that you kind of see yourself telling athletes when you're talking about the transition of things. Oh man, that's tough to break it down to three. But Loaded. Think, All right, we can go to five. We can go to five. No, I'll do it. I, I think I can handle three. <laughs> I think I, I think I'll do three and just kind of take a deep dive on each of them. All because right, I, um, like I think it starts with number one. I look at it as number one, you have to heal and, and move past. Like There has to be a grieving process because you're losing a former version of yourself, the version of yourself that was always praised for being an athlete, the version of yourself that, you know, all these doors opened up to you. You found success by doing one thing very well. And so there has to be a grieving process that that version of you no longer exists. Like, I never want to come to someone, Jeffrey, and be like, hey, your career's over, so what do you want to do now? What are you thinking about? What industry do you want to get into? Like, we can't do all that without addressing that there's a loss that's taking place. Mm -hmm. And so um, that, that would be one of the three things is just to spend some time um, understanding that this fall from grace is normal. And I always tell people, like, you're still a role model. So you still have the opportunity to do great things. Everyone looked up at you for what you did in athletics, but just because you're no longer playing, you have to understand that those people are still looking at you. So, you know, if you just go, you know, if you're a gas station attendant after your career, that's on you. Like you have, you have just as much opportunity as everyone else to be able to build and create this next chapter of your life. So that's the first thing, man, is just healing. Um, during that healing process, you got to talk to someone, you know, you can't live in isolation like I did. When you keep it all bottled up, there's a lot of challenges that you're going to face. You know, that's why I was drinking so much because I didn't understand how to articulate what I was going through. So I always encourage people to get it off your chest. It, it becomes less dangerous when you take it from up here to out here. And it's, you can, you can, sometimes you just need someone to listen, man. It doesn't even have to be a therapist. It doesn't have to be a coach like me. You can just talk to a family member. 
And so, it's okay to talk, right? Like, you know, I think especially with, with male athletes, there's the stigma of like, we can't share our feelings, we can't cry, share our emotions, all that. But like, it's completely natural. It's, it's okay to do all those things. And I think the minute that people start to realize it's okay to, to have those conversations is, and I'm sure you see it, you know, you start to really see that progress with them. 100%. Yeah. And that, yeah, back to what you were, you were talking about with the three things is the first one is you can, you can't have progress until you've had those conversations until you've gotten it off your chest. The next thing I would say, once the healing takes place is it goes back to what I said earlier, you have to cultivate clarity. You have to actually spend time and it takes work. Like before you go to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, take a notepad, write your stuff down, start actually spending time visualizing what you want your life to look like. I always tell people, don't focus on what you want to do. Focus on how you want to live. If you can approach life like that, that changes the game for you because you're not just thinking about how am I going to earn a paycheck? It becomes, what do I actually want my life to look like? And then if you think far enough in advance, you can reverse engineer it, you know, and you can connect with the right people who can help you get there along the way. So cultivating clarity is huge. I, know, I always tell people like, most of the athletes I'm working with, they're fresh out of college. I've worked with some professional athletes, but you know, most, most of them are 22, 23, um, even up into their late twenties at times. And I always remind people like you got another 70, 80 years of life on this planet. That should be exciting. So once you've taken some time to heal, now it's time to get excited. Like, wow, you know, I played football for 15, 20 years, however long it's been, but now I have another 70 years to literally create anything I want, become anybody I want to be. So that's the, the second step. I would say the third piece of advice I would give is once you have that clarity, okay, now it's time to execute. And not only execute, but connect. I call it networking up. You want to connect with people who are already in some way, shape, or form where you want to be. You know, it could even be like, hey, you know what? I like the way this, this person is with people. I like, hey, this person looks like they're balling. I want to figure out how they made their money. This person seems like they really enjoy what they do. I want to connect with that person. And so you start to find people. I call it drafting mentors. Like you find people who are like, I want to be like that person and reach out to them. And you'd be surprised how many people will respond to you and be willing to help you. So yeah, yeah man, that's my three pieces of advice. Dude, I, I love it. And I think that last piece is really important for anybody, right? Like informational interviews, like how many people are willing just to talk to you. And, you know, especially if you're like, Hey, I, I did some research on you. I really respect what you're doing. Like love to learn how you got there. And if you could give me any advice and you're right, man, like people are so willing just to, to chat. I, I did that actually when I, I lost my job with the XFL during COVID before I got on with athletes for care, just to like, chat with people too. Cause I'm sure, you know, and then you see it, like if you do some of those interviews, let's say you have a good chat, right? Six months, maybe a job opens up and they're like, Hey, this job opened up. I think you would be perfect for it. Why don't you, why don't you put your resume in? And then now right. you have a job out of just a, uh, you know, a shot in the dark. And you know, I think that's super important. And I love that you could break it down to three. I thought that was great. Um, so in, in the interest of time here, um, you know, kind of, what do you want to tell people, you know, if, if you had a couple minutes to voice it out to everybody, you know, what would be the one resonating thing you would want athletes in their transition to, to know and be aware of? Um, I would say just to understand that you can either be your own best friend or you can be your own worst enemy. And there's many different layers to that statement because oftentimes I go back, I use myself as an example. I was my own worst enemy by, a, not talking to people, uh, B, not doing anything productive, but just drinking to try to mask what I was going through, and C, um, not spending any time cultivating that clarity that I talked about earlier. So that's me being my own worst enemy. How do you be your best friend? You treat your, I always say you have to treat yourself like you would treat a best friend. You wouldn't be sitting there, you, if you had a friend who didn't make it to the, to the league, or you had a friend who was no longer an athlete, you wouldn't be like, you're a loser, you didn't make it pro, you're, no, you're nobody now. So why do we talk to ourselves like that? That's the polar opposite of being your own best friend. So I would just leave them with that. You can be your own best friend or your own worst enemy. And when you're being your best friend, you want to go back and listen to those three steps that I shared earlier. That's the, I'm not saying that's the recipe, but that's what worked for me. And that's what I've seen work for other people. You got to cultivate that clarity, put yourself in position, connect with great people. And um, nothing but good things can happen for you, especially if you're being consistent day in and day out. I love that. Yeah. Create, create your own routine, right? Like you had a routine while you were doing stuff for your team, like create your own, go to, go to the gym in the morning, wake up, you know, write your goals for the day, whatever it might be. I think that's super important. And, and I love that. Um, 
All right. So if people, you know, want to get in touch with you, if they felt like, you know, they learned something from here, they see this, you know, when we repost it, whatever it might be, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you? So that way, uh, you know, they can start their own transition. Yeah. I mean, obviously you can follow me here on IG, all the links to everything I'm doing are on my link tree, but I would say uh, connect with me on LinkedIn as well. Taj Deshaun on LinkedIn. Um, if you visit TajDeshaun.com, that'll take you everywhere you need to go. It takes you to my podcast. It takes you to where you can get the books. Um, there's time on there to schedule a free call. So if you're listening to this or watching the recording and you're a former athlete, um, just schedule some time. You know, if you know a former athlete who could use some support, uh, I get a lot of parents who schedule calls with me these days because they want to talk to me about what their son or daughter is going through. So that's been pretty interesting. I've been getting a lot of those calls lately. But I would say definitely tap in. Um, I don't charge for my coaching. I have sponsorships and partnerships with nonprofits to where I get compensated to be able to work with athletes for free. So you don't have to get your credit card ready. If you're going through something, even if you need to just get something off your chest, schedule a call and I'll see what I can do for you. Love it, man. And yeah, like, like we were saying earlier, like just, just find somebody to talk to, right? Like no, no need to go to the extreme when, you know, it could be turned around and, you know, it might not be turned around in a day, a week or a month, but, you know, p plenty of people have obviously been in that dark place. You, you yourself were there and to now, you know, you're thriving, man, and, and helping other people. And it's awesome to see. And, you know, from the Athletes for Care side of things, we're, we're super proud to have you as an ambassador with us and looking forward to continue to do more stuff like this with you. And, um, you know, hopefully we can continue to make a difference uh, on and off, you know, the field, court, wherever, wherever the playing service is. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm super honored, man. I, I appreciate you having me on here. Um, I, as you know, I love everything Athletes for Care is doing. Jeffrey, I love what you're about, man. Just you, like I said, they hired the right man for the job because from our first conversation, I'm like this man, yeah, this, this man is a go getter for sure. And you you understand the passion behind the, the vision of Athletes for Care. And that's what's really cool about it. So thank you for all that you do, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, dude. Like, like I said, I've been working in sports philanthropy for almost a decade and I just like getting to know the people, right? Like you're just a person, like we were saying before, like you might be really talented at football or basketball, whatever, but like you're still a human at the end of the day, right? And like I like learning about and getting to know the human behind the, you know, behind the player. Because um, like you said earlier, you know, it's that window of your sport is so small. Um, and, you know, not everybody's able to get that big broadcast deal or, you know, a coaching gig, whatever it might be. And, I think you said it perfectly earlier, you know, you still have 70, 80 years of your life going on and you have a family to build and, and all those things. And like, you can't be there to, to walk your son or daughter down the aisle or, you know, whatever it might be for those big life events, if you're, you're taking it to the extreme. So, you know, I, I love what you're doing. Um, you know, we're here to help in any way that we can. And, um, you know, we're definitely going to be doing this series some more. Like you mentioned, we got Derek Frillo coming up. Um, in October, and then any other athletes that want to hop on, you know, reach out to us. Um, I'd love to make this kind of a consistent series that we can just talk to people like you and put some advice out there. And hopefully, you know, whether somebody gets something from this conversation or another one, whatever it might be, we just want to make a difference day in and day out. That's it, brother. You're the man, Jeffrey. I appreciate, appreciate you, I bro. appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, it's absolutely, awesome. man. We, we appreciate you. Everybody, thank you for tuning in, those that hopped on. Um, you know, definitely reach out to Taj if you have any questions. Reach out to us at Athletes for Care if you need anything at all. And um, let's keep it moving and let's keep making a difference. Awesome. Take care, brother. Have a have good, a good one. day.